Number three. In the nuclear industry, chlorine trifluoride is used to prepare uranium hexafluoride, a volatile compound of uranium used in the separation of uranium isotopes. Chlorine trifluoride is prepared by the reaction Cl2 gas plus 3F2 gas yields 2 ClF3 gas. Write the equation that relates the rate expressions for this reaction in terms of the disappearance of Cl2 and F2 and the formation of ClF3. You got it! All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to rewrite this equation. So Cl2 gas plus 3 F2 gas yields 2 Cl F3 gas. Okay, so it seems like we don't have any values here. They just want us to write out the general rate expressions. Now, just know that a rate can always be expressed in two types of units. A rate is basically how much either a, uh, a substance is going to be decreasing in concentration or pressure over a certain amount of time, or increasing in concentration and pressure over a certain amount of time. So that's your two units. A rate can either be written as either concentration values, so maybe I'll say x over some type of time, or some type of pressure, right? Pressure over some type of time the pressure of that compound. P to, you know, when you write out pressure, the X becomes the uh, subscript. Now, nine times out of 10, uh, you will see rates in terms of their concentrations. So for this one, since they didn't specifically say which uh, rate expression they wanted, we're gonna go with the molarity one. Now, the next thing is, we just have to convert all of these three substances into their rates. Now, keep in mind that it's just a certain type of concentration over a period of time. So for Cl2, I'm just going to say that I had a certain amount of chloride, Cl2, uh, Cl2 over, maybe I'll put that, over a certain amount of time. The fluoride, I'm going to do the same thing. Here's my concentration of fluorine over a certain amount of time, and then I got to do it again for this one. So Cl F3 over a certain amount of time. Okay, now the next thing is, is that keep in mind that as I've been saying it, it's over some period of time, right? From maybe one second to two seconds, three seconds to 10 seconds. But there has to be some type of change in the time. And when that is going on, the Cl2 and F2 are going to be dropping to make the products. So the concentrations are also going to be changing as well. And to always write out a change is always that delta sign. So for all these, we just have to say a change in the chloride ion, or not an ion, the change in the chloride molecule divided by a change in time. That's a rate now. The change in the fluoride over a change in time. And the change in the ClF3 over a change in time. Okay, that part is done. There's a couple of more, but at least we got that down. The next thing is, we have to say, well, how are these going to be related? Is it going to be the Cl2 plus the F2 equals this? Is there all going to be plus? Are they all going to be minus? Right? Are they going to be equal to each other? What do you think? They are going to be equal to each other because this is a certain type of rate. It's all based off of the coefficients, right? Just as like, you know, if you have a certain amount of moles, you can make a mole ratio to find out all your other components. The rates are the same as well. So we can say that the rate of this Cl2 would be equal to the F2, which will be equal to the ClF3, because it's all via stoichiometry. But now, we're still not there. There's a couple of things that we just have to keep, you know, paying attention to, because by this, we're saying that this is a one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one relationship, if everything is just equal right from the beginning. But that's not true, because if I look at my coefficients, I got a three in here and I got a two. 
So I need to, in, you know, I need to put these values somewhere into my rate. And just know that these values are always going to be the denominator of your rate. So now we're going to in, introduce another fraction. So right from your rate, you're just going to add like a small fraction in the middle and it's going to be multiplied by your rate. And those values on the bottom, that is your coefficients. So the coefficients for your rate expression is always going to be the denominator. Keep in mind if you don't have a coefficient, that's a one, right? So this one would be a one on the bottom. This one would be a three on the bottom and this would be a two. What is the number that's going to be on the top? It's just the placeholder. This is just a one. So they're all going to be ones on the top, but the coefficients are going to always be on the bottom. Now one over one is just one. So we can just get rid of this one because you could put one over one, but technically simplified, just get rid of it. Now we got one last thing. We have to say that I have to show that, you know, CL2 and F2 are disappearing and ClF3 is forming. And we know that as this reaction is progressing, your reactants are always going to be disappearing. And as these are disappearing, your products are going to be appearing or forming. We can also say this, that as the left side is dropping, the right side is increasing. We write that into our equation as negatives and positives. If this side is dropping, that's the negative sign. The appearing side is the positive. So all of your reactants that have, uh, all of your reactants have to have a negative in front of them. So this Cl2, got to have a negative. That's showing that it's disappearing. The F2, that has to have a negative because it's a reactant. So I'm just going to stick the negative in front. This one should have a positive, but you know, positive and, and not putting anything there assumes that it is positive. And now we have all of our things taken accounted for, and this would be your final answer. So just take step by step. Keep in mind, you got to put those deltas in there. It's always going to be, you know, nine times out of 10. Uh, molarity over time, put those fractions in there going by the coefficients and don't forget those negatives and the positives. Yeah. Okie dokie. I hope this helped. Thank you for viewing the video and subscribe to the channel. If you want to help us out, I hope you have a great day. Keep studying hard. Thank you so much for coming here and being part of the community. I love helping you guys out and I try to get back to as many of you guys that I can in the comments. So thank you so much for your kind comments and I think that's it. I'll talk to you soon, okay? All right, bye-bye.